Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. Uh, we have Jermaine van der Velden, who is an IT advisor at the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management. He is specialized in cybersecurity, digitalization, and digital technologies such as quantum, AI, and cloud. Jermaine focuses on topics as quantum technology, post-quantum cryptography, IT strategy, and national and economic security. He is also a member of the QVC Rijk team. And then we have Anita Weyman, a senior policy advisor at the Ministry of the Interior and Kingdom Relations, um, who initiated the QVC Rijk program. She's working on the, uh, the field of cybersecurity and integrated security since 2009 for several organizations within the Dutch government. It is her passion to make the Dutch government more cyber resilient through collaboration. Uh, Jermaine, Anita, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we'll start with a small recap from uh, yesterday. Well, ah, thank you. Um, and then we'll uh, start with uh, through, uh, three main questions which will uh, be guided by uh, Jermaine. Well, yesterday uh, we started with uh, why uh, did we start this program? because uh, we found from the PQC handbook that the Dutch central government is an urgent adopter because they match the criteria for urgent adopter and that's when you have sensitive data or it's state secret or personal data that if you have to be uh, confidential for a long time and also if you provide systems in the critical infrastructure of uh, systems with a very long uh, lifespan, then you have to start now and uh, well, the central, urge, uh, uh, central government has all of these uh, in their scope, so we are an urgent adopter, and so are our IT providers. Um, that's why we have this uh, um, goal, uh, um, uh, uh, we are ambitious, and we want to make the whole uh, government quantum ready, and uh, uh, that's so that they can, um, mitigate their risks on time. And we do that, do that through three um, goals, uh, on creating awareness, on uh, giving direction, and uh, offering support. And you see it in this slide. We, we are now full uh, in business with the awareness campaign and knowledge. Uh, we are creating policies and uh, get, develop guidelines, this, uh, as we told yesterday, and we want to support in practice. But on the way, when we get there, we have these three, you see how we can do it, what we can do, and awareness and urgency. And then we have these three uh, main topics that we want to discuss with you about and uh, uh, we made this very simple model of the whole problem because uh, people say to us, oh, it's very complicated and uh, how, where do we start? And we see these three main issues. And the first issue is, uh, what is the cryptography you have in use now? Most organizations don't have a clue. Uh, and not only uh, government organizations, but also private partners and also IT providers. They don't know what cryptography they have in use. The second problem is the new cryptography. What will the standards be? There is no committee of clever people who decide what cryptography you should use for all products because it's not a not there yet. And when we do know our A, our current cryptography, and we know for each kind of use what a new standards will be, then you can make a migration plan, right? 
If you know A, you know B, then you can know what A corresponds to what B. But on the way, I draw, we, we draw a line, but not horizontal, but up. We know that B will not technological be equal to A. So it's not pull out one certificate and pull in. We, we saw uh, uh, like uh, the fur, uh, former speakers who discussed this. We, on the way, we will dis encounter lots of problems. And that's why we need to experiment. I'm very glad that an, a lot of people say, hey, we must do this together. So we want to have this expertise center uh, to, to help us to res do research on these problems and to solve them so that everyone can migrate from A to B. So that leads us to our discussion points and our questions we want to discuss with you. And I uh, hand over the microphone to Jermaine. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Anita. So um, uh, let's make a let's make it interactive. Um, so basically, we have um, three questions, and the first question is: Do you know what cryptography you have in use, and how can you inventorize that? So I see uh, <laughs> some people laughing in here. So can someone comment on this question or give an answer? Sorry, could you go up to the mic, please? Yeah, I, I think one of the issues that I, I myself find myself in when I try to look at uh, this kind of thing is that um, there's a lot of products that use cryptography, well, to maybe not even be so explicit, like, like messenger apps, uh, things like all kinds of office applications, things like that. Of course, we have got the PPI constructs um, uh, of PPI structures for, for handling certificates and stuff like that, but uh, we know about those. But I think there's a lot of items uh, out there that use cryptography that, yeah, that where it's not maybe not even specified uh, that it's using cryptography at all. And it's also the question if you want to, um, yeah, how much importance you want to give uh, those products for, for this kind of thing. So we, I think it's become quite a lot harder uh, like in the last uh, time. Yeah, thank you. Someone else wants to comment? No. So where do we start then? If we have a lot of cryptography in these in these products, um, and we obviously work for smaller or bigger organizations, so where do we start with inventorizing? Anybody have a clue? So I think I uh, could find out what cryptography we are uh, implementing, uh, which libraries we're using, which calls we're making to those libraries. Um, I think we could also find out um, which systems, infrastructures we're using. Um, I can't get, get you a complete list of uh, what cryptography those systems are using, um, but we could ask our infrastructure providers, vendors, etc. Uh, ask them whether they have an inventory or a migration plan. Uh, so that, that could be a start. Yeah. So basically asking um, your suppliers uh, what, crypto, uh, what cryptography do you use in your products or do you have a list? Something like that, right? Okay, thank you, Niels. Um, well, let's go to the second question. So basically, if we are going to um, do all these migrations and uh, implement post-quantum cryptography or other forms of uh, uh, solutions, can we still communicate? What about interoperability standards? Anyone wants to reflect on that? So basically, if um, we're doing this migration uh, all over the world, you know, um, and we're implementing uh, several uh, algorithms for post-quantum cryptography or uh, 
sometimes other solutions like hybrid solutions uh, with somatic uh, forms. Um, how can we still communicate with other parties in terms of interoperability, uh, etc.? So don't we make it harder to communicate with each other? Well, I would say that's a work in progress for the most uh, applications we're using in the sense that, well, there is attention, there is user share, but we're not there yet. I would say we're on the way there. Yeah. And what do we need to be there? Well, I will say there's a lot of focus in, on some areas, like all of discussion, for instance, in internet uh, protocols, and a bit less, I will say, in less universal, less global protocols, and then probably also need to focus on, on those. Okay, thank you. My suggestion would be we need some test beds to road test these new protocols and to get the feedback on how they would work in the real systems later on. Yeah, thanks. I think for a long time it would be hybrid model. It will, uh, if you implement the patterns, as long as the other, if the other parties are not able to deal with that, I think it will be a hybrid model. I think it's the smart way. And for, for, a, for a long period, I think a lot of, we, we focus on use case control government. And uh, a lot of times, when we, I can see right now how we move, communicate data and send input data, I think it will be a hybrid model when we can even be communicating with each other. Yeah, and what are these hybrid models? What, what do you think of? So I don't have the answer yet, but I'm mm -hmm. thinking uh, when we're sending the encrypted data over the, especially specifically for applications, we probably need a mechanism where it can be decrypted. I do not know the answer yet. Okay. But I just think, you know, not everybody will, as you said in the comment statement, not everybody will uh, migrate to the standard at the same time. So it's quite complex. Yeah. Yeah, I think I will join my <laughs> predecessor um, in uh, one hybrid and uh, uh, are definitely one uh, possible solution to this uh, problem so that we can have a backward compatibility to other systems. Um, but also uh, we should focus on this crypt agility that we are now have the chance to, to, to build systems that uh, are prepared to, to also adopt to, to new uh, developments here. And we need to think about how to, to, to implement this uh, properly now. So, uh, and the, the answer, the concrete answer will depend on the use cases you have. That take AI is definitely something else than, for example, the, the AI does. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Yeah, crypto agility, that's, uh, that's an important concept uh, uh, with the problem uh, at hand. Um, so, what do you think um, needs to be done with regard to crypto agility? Uh, how can we make sure that suppliers uh, will implement that? Does anybody have a clue? I even have more questions uh, because mm -hmm. crypt, crypt agility sounds really good on a paper and it, on a term wise point of view, but still I can't put my head around and I did a lot of reading last night on this. Con can't still put my head around is if I, let's assume if I use a method to encrypt my data and if I send it to somebody else, how, what is it, because crypt is quite related to, or data is related to quite what crypt is used. Changing it to the crypt agility, so I still not ma managed to understand. I probably that's the reason I'm here to learn more. Is what do you think is a practical way of implementing crypt, crypt agility? I think. I think that's why I have more questions rather than answers. Yeah. Hi, thank you for the previous questions because uh, I think this topic of crypto agility can be taken also outside of uh, more of a broader scope, um, not just focusing on the technological solutions, but really seeing the organizations and uh, who are part of this uh, PKI ecosystem to see uh, what are the necessary steps that organizations should be considered when implementing this crypto agility in their security strategies. Thank you.
Well, for us, uh, one of the struggles we have with crypto agility discussion is that we're always talking about enterprises or our suppliers, but our consumers are much more of a problem for us in this respect, because we can be as crypto agile as we like, but if our consumers are not able to follow up because they use their software for years, they're not doing that. So that's really where some of our challenges lie, that we see on the uh, brink where we have maybe up to par crypto and do everything which ne is needed, but how does it interface with the browsers? How does it interface with our interactive customers? That's really one of our challenges that we really don't know how to cover yet. Yeah, yeah the interoperability, yeah. Just a quick reminder that also the online audience is welcome to participate. Thank you. Um, okay, then uh, let's, hover, let's head over to the last question. So, we all heard some interesting uh, challenges we have. How can we work together in solving these challenges? And then it was quiet. <laughs> um, yeah, one of the things that, that I can see is that, the, for instance, uh, for, for software, and we are talking software here, of course, because nobody is going to do these calculations out of the top of his head. Um, uh, the, the, uh, what is really important is make sure that the libraries and, and, and things like that, open source libraries maybe are, uh, are in place so that uh, people can actually go there. And uh, also to help make sure that these libraries are secure and, and, and get reviewed um, uh, so that everybody can, can use those to, to upgrade their uh, products. I think that's an important one. Okay, thank you. And in working together, do you need something for the government or from organizations? Anybody want to reflect on that? I think for forums, forums like this where we can actually collaborate more, not in the silos, I think definitely will help because there are a lot of, lots of lots of unknowns around right now. Lots of unknowns. Yeah. Not only the not only the the crypt standards, but also the API supports, as the gentleman said before. And I'm going to go into the lower level, like Node.js, JS, or other libraries, how these scripts will be available into those things. So I think there are lots of lots of unknowns right now on that area. Yeah. So having these common forums will help to understand it. Thank you. Hi. So uh, I think there's two parts of uh, this, uh, to this uh, migration problem. So one of them is the planning, right? As you mentioned, you need to know what you have and you need to come with a plan, prioritize what you need to do. And that by itself is rather complex. So one of the reasons I was here was trying to find out what the Netherlands is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you're not as far advanced as I was hoping. So uh, there's what would you have hoped? Hmm? What would, would you have hoped? That you were actually uh, already in the planning phase, right? That you had taken stock and that mm -hmm. you would be working on the planning phase because of course that's uh, the very tricky, uh, tricky part. Because in the planning phase, you have to find out how, for instance, when you replace your backend PKI, yep. you're going to maintain integration with your applications. So you can do some kind of hybrid scheme, fine, but with what, right? Because that's, of course, the, the running question, like what are you going to use for your migration? So that's, that's a bit of a problem. So how, uh, well, we, we've been tackling similar problems, and usually when we look, for instance, in interoperability, right, we look at the use cases where you actually need interoperability. So for this, it might be, you know, data connections, it might be, secure voice, uh, you have a number of these areas and you need to basically get on the same page with your stakeholders. And I think, for instance, the Netherlands can play a coordinating role in that uh, for the use cases that they foresee. Uh, the other part is when you actually start, have to start planning, as I mentioned, you need to know, you know what to do in which areas. And I think these two problems will come together a little bit. Because unless for these use cases that you have to come up with, a, with an overall forward approach, uh, I think you're not really going to know what you're going to use in hybrid right? because you don't know how to migrate. So I think yeah, yeah we can benefit from doing lessons learned and uh, good discussions on, on how to make it work for some of these interoperability problems. I think for these two areas, I think they're the big ones and we can learn from each other because we, we're all going to face the same issues. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I also want to, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, 
maybe we should also uh, uh, try to find out uh, to which uh, entities we need to talk to. Because uh, um, for, for Germany at least, uh, for example, in the banking sector, uh, they have their own rules. So, um, <laughs> and uh, we had the talk uh, yesterday from uh, Remi from, uh, from Banco Santander. Um, but uh, he's quite aware of, but uh, I think in the German sector, it's, uh, they are very conservative. And uh, I think they do not yet see uh, the problem as, uh, as we do. So maybe we should also try to, to identify the, the, the people that need to be, uh, yeah, where, where we need to raise awareness. <laughs> yeah, awareness. Uh, okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. I also think it's important to recognize that this is an incredible opportunity for all of us. Um, this change to post-quantum things, which will uh, likely be mandated uh, you know, across the board in all sorts of different industries gives us an opportunity to get rid of a lot of legacy things, if you want. Things like um, the Merkle tree certificates, that's something that could never be done before this. You would never get any buy-in to that. But now we have an opportunity to re replace uh, a system instead of stapling, you know, more and more things onto it. If we move everything to hybrid where we staple on post-quantum, then at some point, 10 years from now, we'll be looking back at that 15 years from now, 20 years from now. We'll still be using hybrid key exchange because we can't ever remove the old portion that we've now stapled post-quantum on the end. I would first like to clarify that I, I am a PhD uh, researcher. Um, so uh, what I say is uh, sort of based on the, the data I have collected. Um, I think there's a bit of importance in setting like directions and what are the common visions and what would be necessary for organizations, actors in the PPI ecosystem are, are willing to uh, commit to. So I think I see the uh, throughout this uh, consortium, I see a lot of willingness and enthusiasm of uh, uh, self, uh, software uh, service providers and PKI uh, uh, providers as well. But I think it's the, the, the talents are there and we have uh, a willingness to really proceed. But I think there is a bit of a uh, lack of uh, direction in terms of, okay, then what is needed in the, from these parties and uh, how can we together work towards it? So um, yeah, it's, it's nice to be at a forum like this to discuss this. Thank you. So if you go back to um, the uh, issue we had uh, with Lord Fourier, uh, it seems clear that uh, every uh, service provider who has more than one client uh, will benefit from making uh, transparent how quantum ready they are, instead of waiting for their customers to do all the inquiries, which because we uh, spend a lot of um, effort just um, um, replying individual questions, and we need to be smarter about that. So have some kind of transparency which is uh, trustworthy for your customers, uh, then I think you can save a lot of time as, uh, as a service provider. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I think also, as if this is uh, such a global problem, uh, there needs to be at least some well, clear incentive for first movers. I mean, if you are the first, you're probably going to do it wrong. You're going to probably make mistakes and, and run into things. And there needs to be some, well, uh, investment area thing to do. So because that's for a lot of commercial companies, of course, the question, what will I be the first mover and lose a lot of money or not? So yeah. I think we need to at least get some clarity on that, whether there will be possibilities to support each other in that. Also in the, from a financial perspective, so not only knowledge and things like that, but really enterprises like will always be financial, have, have a financial aspect into that as well. So that's also where I'm well, not sure what would be the solution, but I think the financial part should not be forgotten if you want to involve enterprises in, into this uh, kind of migration path. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. And this counts for governments as well. Uh, we also uh, have to make a lot of mistakes and, uh, yeah. 
Um, and, and that's also the reason why we, um, we're going to um, create a center of excellence where we can uh, uh, bring knowledge together and where we uh, can share the same mistakes and the lessons learned and um, that basically is in, in, in the planning phase. But, um, but yeah, uh, I think that's one of the way, ways to go forward with this and to connect it with all the centers of excellences which are popping up around the globe so that we all can learn from each other. Uh, also on a global scale, if it is possible. Um, so can I hand it over to you yeah. for the final, the final words? Well, we uh, whenever we do an awareness session, we always have some uh, takeaways for uh, for our audience. And these are our takeaways, uh, what we uh, think that organizations can and should do now. So uh, we always say, hey, know what your crown jewels uh, make. Know what your crown jewels uh, are. Um, and protect the information now that must be confidential uh, for a long time, like the Mosca equation uh, told you uh, yesterday. Um, and uh, add the quantum thrift to your risk management process. Uh, the quantum threat, it should also be known to the board and uh, when it's in the list of the uh, threats and uh, the risks, then it gets uh, attention and you can decide whether you have to start moving uh, now. And um, you can also ask your future vendors how they're preparing and select your vendors on this criteri criterion. Uh, and you can also do uh, preparations for later changes. So uh, know what cryptography is in use where, and also ask your uh, suppliers uh, about this, so that they have this incentive to start as well. And um, you can also do some preparation changes, like uh, when you have TLS 1.2, move to TLS 1.3. And if you can't move, from TLS 1.2 to 1.3, then you have some problem areas in the future to move to quantum secured cryptography. So then it, it, it helps to know where your problems will be. Um, and um, well, I also said the third one. And uh, well, there's this PQC migration handbook. Look at the first pages of it. Uh, know what persona you are. And also the NCSC have some hands-on guidelines. Uh, right now they're only in Dutch, but they want to uh, give an English version uh, on the internet uh, one of these weeks. So uh, that was uh, what we wanted to discuss with you uh, about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jermaine and Anita. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.